This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Woods Church. It's a full day on lots of levels. I'll explain in a second, but we're glad to have you here. We're glad for those of you that are watching at home, too, that you're a part of our worship life and worship family. And if you have the chance, you can write something in the chat feature and just say hello or greet others that are watching. And if you ever have a prayer request or a need, you can either write in the chat feature or send us an email. Uh, mine is simply rbush at woodschurch.org. But go to the website and you'll find out more there about what's going on. So today is a full day in a couple ways, as I mentioned. Number one, right now in the fellowship hall, uh, a lot of the people are gathered to remember and celebrate Carolyn Watkins. Carolyn's been with us as our cook and the kitchen coordinator for 23 years. She helps not only with the Child Development Center, but with the rehabbers and all the different church programs. She's not retiring. In fact, we keep telling her we're refusing to open her retirement letter, uh, but she's hinted that that date might come later this year. So we're having a chance to celebrate her 23 years of service and ministry with us. So that's happening today. Secondly, today is a Commitment Sunday. You'll see on the communion table different cards and envelopes. It's our chance as a church to commit ourselves to the work and ministries through our gifts, through our pledges, through our offerings. 
Also in the fellowship pads, the little folders which hopefully sometime you'll pass around, there are some hearts. So you have a couple of choices today. If you, brought, if you received a pledge card or would like to submit a pledge card, that's great. Hopefully you brought it with you. We have some extras and the ushers can get them to you or they're on the little table in the back. But also if you'd like to just acknowledge ways that you give back to the church through service, through volunteering, use one of the hearts and you can write that on there. And during the prayer time, uh, Sarah Wilson and I will be up front and we'll invite people during the next song to bring forward their pledge cards and their hearts and their other commitments. So that's a part of what's happening today. There's a softball game today for those of you that are softball folk. There's a flower ministry workshop happening on Friday. And we're wanting to make sure we get all the information of those graduating from high school and college. So if that's on your horizon this season, uh, send us some information so we can celebrate the seniors on the 21st. And then next week, join us for this service when our 18 confirmation students will all be received as new members. So with that, welcome to worship. Let's start with our music. Come, arise, sing. Now is the time to worship with thankful hearts. God is good, and God's love endures forever. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit, and let's worship God together.
enthusiasm, I invite you to greet each other with the peace of Christ. Peace be with you all. Peace of Christ. It's good having you here. I want to invite forward our children to join for a time uh, with Miss Cat today as we celebrate the many ways we can make commitments to Christ. So come on up, you guys. Be brave here. Sometimes I sit down, I totally disappear from that screen. So I'm glad to know I still exist. I know. I went to a soccer game with uh, my son and a friend of his, and my son is about six one and my son's friend is about six three and th we were on the jumbotron and by wow. we i mean john blank <laughs> sam <laughs> i wasn't but they had a big space and that was me that was the space between um we did get a little feedback that it was difficult to hear me which i don't get that a lot so um over here can you guys hear me raise your hand in the back Okay, over here, can you hear me? Raise your hand at the back. Up there, if you'd rather not hear me, raise your hand. Oh. I was asking for it. Um, first of all, short announcement for the grown-ups. Um, oh, hi, Miss Sarah. Welcome. Uh, you may have some hearts in your friendship folder, or the 11 o'clock may have taken them all, in which case we can get you one. Um, it's an opportunity to write or draw something that, I'm, I'm telling you, it's an opportunity to write or draw ways that you can show God's love to other people. Because, um, you know, we don't always walk around saying, hi, I'm Kat, I'm a Christian. Uh, hi, that's Pastor great. Randy May, it's kind of his job. <laughs> but it's our job too. And you know you're a Christian by what you do, not necessarily. Um. I actually think it's a fireman. And this was 11 o'clock, so you can, we knew you were coming. Firemen have red suits. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a robot. You think it's a robot? I think it's Are you a robot? Okay, <laughs> now we know. Good job. All right. Well, there are a lot of ways we can show uh, that we're a Christian. And um, one of the ways is by helping others out, like playing in the band and singing songs. Um, Miss Carolyn, who we just had a celebration for, did you guys go in and say hi? Miss Carolyn makes food for the church, for the church school, for the rehabbers, and lots of times those leftovers go to people who, who wouldn't have lunch otherwise. And Miss Carolyn surely shows she's a Christian by what she does, doesn't she? I got diamonds. You did? Um, I'm not sure how that shows you're a Christian, but good for you. That's exciting. They're shiny, aren't they? I think people's smiles are sometimes shiny after you've done something nice for them. Yeah. Well, you one. Have yep. And maybe if you share those, that might be a way to show you that you're you're kind too. Like one zero zero. Nice. That's a big number, isn't it? I lost real though. Okay. So ninety seven. Impressed with my math? I, I was. But. Thank you. They don't let me do the maths. 
Mm -mm. Anyway, well, we also, friends, have this. And this is for everybody. This, what does this look like? What kind of game? Squares, yeah, and there's a squirrel on it. They might yep. not have played bingo. That's right. Well, this is a bingo sort of. I'm about to say that. Yep. Mm. And you're, the idea is to get five across, up and down, or diagonally. And um, what it has on it are different ways that you can participate in the life and service of the church, in the ways that you can show others you're a Christian. And um, some of the kids, the older kids, might hear today about how we can help others know that we are God's children and followers of Jesus. We have a little workbook, workbook we're going to look at. If you are a kid who doesn't want to go downstairs because you're taller than I am or you're older um, and you still want one of these, please let me know. We have quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. So, so the all these are ways that we show that we love God's people and that we try to help God's people. So it's just ways that we show love. It's what all comes in. That's why it's a heart. Yeah. Are you trying to get out of singing? Oh, we, we are going to sing. We are can we? do it. All One right. of the ways we pray is by singing. And these guys are inspirational. They and by are. the way, you're on my side. Okay? All of you guys. Wait, where'd Sarah go? We had a test run at the 930. So. All right. I get them. He gets you. All right, so what we're going to do is sing a song about what it means um, like for people to, t what? How much is a couple? Uh, more than one. That's all I know. So we're going to sing this three times, and I, I am going to apologize up front. I still have a little COVID damage to my vocal cords. I've got about six notes, and they're all on the bottom. But I love you. You love me. We're going to be fine. It'll all work. All right, go. Um, <laughs> love. Yeah. Love, 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 the gospel in a word is love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, love, love. Who knows that? There we go. We got more. I got to say, you're more than 11 o'clock. 9.30. Did more you guys know it? Awesome. You're on my side. We're going to sing it all together. <laughs> We're going to sing it all together once. And then Pastor Randy's group, which is this side. I know that's why I was staring at Sarah for sitting with him. Well, if you don't don't know it, you can just kind of hum along or sway. Well, that's okay. We don't. Everybody doesn't like the same things. Thank it's, you. It's love four times. Team and then cat. The gospel in a word is love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, love, love. Yep. And um, that'll work. So we're gonna sing it all together once. Then Pastor Randy will start. We'll come in, and they'll wait because we'll finish, we'll and then we'll sing it all together. Okay. Is that this confused is anybody? I tried. All right. Are we all ready? This is all together. Love, 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 love. 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 The, the gospel, gospel in a word is love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, love, love. Now our side, and... Love, 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 the gospel love, love, in a word love, is love. love. The gospel love your neighbor in a word as yourself. is love. Love, 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 love as yourself. Love, love, love. And then together. Love, 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 love the gospel in a word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, love, love. So what do you think was the important part about that? Which word do you think? What did you hear a lot? God is a very important. What? Love your neighbor. That's right. That's right. Should we do a prayer or are we going to send up? If you want to. One more. What? Love your neighbor that, as you yourself. You know, that is very important. That's an important mm -hmm. part. Right, we're going to do a prayer, though. Are you ready? Yep. And love. All right, ready? One, two, three. Okay. You don't have to sing again. This is a prayer. Here we go. Loving God. Loving God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. And thank you for leading us. And thank you for leading us. To show love to others. To show love to others. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
All right, guys. Right. Thank you very much. Head towards Miss Marsha, who's Marcia right now. back there. Let's go, let's go. As the kids head out, we'll continue in worship. I invite you to rise if you'd like for this next song. We're going to come behind the table here. Sarah's going to join me up here. Um, so we're doing a couple things at once. We're broadly coming into a time of prayer. And in those times of prayer, what we're doing is lifting up concerns that are on your hearts and on the world's heart. But it's also going to be a time when we prepare to receive and to bring forward our hearts and our pledge cards and our commitments to the church. So all of that is part of this prayer time. So Sarah and I, kind of like we did the round, um, we want to first start with any prayer requests that you might have. So are there special prayer needs you would like us to remember this day? So your nephew, Drew Baker, struggling with leukemia. So prayers for Drew. On this side, any prayer requests or thoughts? I want to pray for all the confirmation kids. John, in the back there. Uh, prayer for my wife's health. Okay. So 
So prayers for, um, oh, John, I blanked on your wife's name. Pray for her, for her health as well. All right, so a reminder, um, there have been cards sent out, pledge cards. There are some by the little table, too. If you're pledging online, you can mark that as well as a sign of your own commitment. And the hearts that the children and people have filled out. After the prayer time, we will turn to our song, and we'll have you come forward and bring those gifts and pledge commitments forward. But I'm going to turn to Sarah for a time of prayer. Gentle God, trusting in your tender mercy, we confess our sin to you with one another. We confess that we forget you. We are so concerned for our own comfort that we forget our neighbors. We're so attached to our own will that we forget yours. We are so aware of our need, we forget our calling. We're so pleased with our possessions that we forget that they are yours. Bring us back to mindfulness, God. Forgive us and be generous with your grace. Heal our hearts, restore your spirit in us, and recreate us in your image. Awaken us to the gifts you have placed within us that we might live by them with trust and courage. Creator God, as we've confessed our sins together as a community, we also pray as and for our community. Help us to break our dependency on the satisfaction of personal cravings. Help us to find joy in the triumphs of others, to see the splendor of small things, and be grateful simply to share in the sacred trust of life. So we'll learn to thank you on good days and bad, during sunshine and gloom, in elegance or simplicity, of people who know they neither deserve nor have earned some reward, but are liberated by Christ to celebrate all life, all resources, all friendships as gifts of your grace. Lord, we ask a special measure of your blessing for all those who face challenges in health or heart today. We lift the names of those spoken aloud this morning. Grant a special measure of your peace to them and all those who care for them. Among our congregation, we lift those up on our prayer list. We offer the name of Wayne and Sue, Reinald Carter and Pete Cooper, Dave Carolyn, Randy Fisher, Shay Hands, John Hollis, Louise Jobes and Jean Lafferty, Pat Johnson, Carla Masterson, Jeff Norris. Lord, we give you thanks and lift Charlie Phelps, Edie Segree, Mary Stearns, Jack Taylor, Charlene Van Meter. We pray for Robin Williams, Joe and Connie Wines, and Jeff Wood. Please make your comforting presence known for those who mourn the passing of loved ones. Lori Danko on the death of her brother-in-law, Tom, and Doug Nauman on the death of his mother, Betty Nauman. Lord, we pray for all healthcare workers, military personnel, volunteers, and first responders to crisis and for their families. We pray for our mission partners and co-workers in our communities and around the globe. Lord, we pray for all those affected by natural disaster or human conflicts which cause devastation and suffering. Ease their burdens and offer hope in the midst of despair. Move us to action on their behalf and grant them peace. And Lord, as we stand at your table this morning, gracious and loving God, giver of all that is good and true and beautiful and life-giving, the cards we place on your table this morning represent our labor. They represent our lives. They represent our dreams. The pledges which we make on them are significant to us, but are just tokens of the awesome gifts that have been given to us. They're pledged in thanksgiving for all we have received, for all we have been inspired to be, and for all we are challenged to become in and through this place. May they be the first fruits of all we have and not what we have left over, so that we may live out as closely as possible how you give to us. May we see them as our offering to you, sacred, holy, yet earthly, and filled with possibilities. 
Help us to hold this image in our hearts and minds so as we watch our offerings each week come to this table, we can see our very selves being part of this offering. Gracious God, we submit to you these gifts as symbols of our lives. Receive them with love, bless them with grace, and use them according to your will. All these things spoken and those we hold silently in our hearts this morning, we lift in prayer to you, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So in the various ways we offer our gifts back to God, so one is through song, so I invite you to stand for the next song while the people are bringing forward. There's a song, right? Excellent. All right. So during this song, we invite you to come forward, and if you wish, if you have a card or a heart, to add it to these offerings on this Commitment Sunday.
So in today's passage, there's an event that's described that I set up in the earlier service with a couple other passages. So I won't read them for you. But the lector for the service read first a bit from Mark's gospel. Remember there was a gentleman named Legion who had demons in him that Jesus cured, cast out the demons. After he was cured, the man asked to be able to stay with Jesus, but he sent him back to his home, sent him back to the town where he'd long been ostracized to share about the healing he'd received. In a similar way, there was a woman in a village in Samaria who Jesus met at a well, and she was there during a time of day when no one else was around her, but Jesus talked to her and sent her back into the town that she would tell them about this Messiah who knew all about her and who offers the water of life. Those two gospel stories are a way, a preface to set up for this passage. Now this comes from John's gospel. This is when Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room during the time of the Last Supper. And he offers them words of encouragement knowing that he would soon be betrayed and crucified. So this is a reading from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 23. Listen to God's word. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. And on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And they who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and will reveal myself to them. Now Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said to Jesus, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So some mail came to the church that was actually addressed to each one of you. So I took the liberty to open it on your behalf. So start on, it said, Dear Bob and Dixie and uh, Vic and Carol Ann and Jean and Sarah, and, and you know your names anyway. It said, I hope you're doing well. I'm coming to stay with you. I'm anxious to see you and to hear how things are going. So it sounds like actually we're going to have a house guest pretty soon. So I guess my recommendation is after the service to go home, tidy up a little bit. You're probably going to need to get some clean sheets in a guest room and maybe some fresh towels. You also might have to rearrange your schedules a little bit just to be able to make sure you're available for this guest that is coming to stay with you. Uh, but actually, I didn't finish the letter. So it said, I'm anxious to see you and to hear how things are going. Trust me, we have a lot of work to do together. Love the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is coming to stay with us, and that's, that's good news, isn't it? God's own Spirit will be staying with us, abiding with us. But I guess the unsettling part of the letter was that line near the end that said, we have a lot of work to do together. That sounds much more dramatic than just getting out fresh towels. It sounds like actually we might have to change the way we do some things in our life. Change? Doesn't the Holy Spirit know that we're all Presbyterians? <laughs> Now, it's at this point in the sermon I could insert some whimsical remarks about how churches are very hesitant to change, perhaps even asking how many Presbyterians it takes to change a light bulb. None, because the Lord ordaineth both darkness and light. 
five, one to change the bulb, and four to complain that they like the old one better. And nine, one to change the bulb, and eight to form a committee and report back at their next monthly meeting. The other answer is to know that it only takes one Pentecostal to change a light bulb because, well, frankly, her arms are already in the air. <laughs> but let you know, I would never derail a sermon with cheap humor like that. <laughs> now, as people of faith, our lives actually go through lots of times of change. It goes back to the very beginning of time itself. Adam and Eve fell into sin while they were in paradise, but God didn't abandon them as they had a total change of address and wandered east of Eden. Noah and his family survived the flood, but as soon as the ark came to rest on the top of Mount Ararat, their lives were changed totally, and they were sent out into the world to flourish. Abraham and Sarah could have stayed with their ancestors forever, but God called them to a new place and a new home. And Ruth, God intervened in her life, taking her out of her home in Moab and delivering her to a new place in Bethlehem where she would meet Boaz and become King David's great-grandmother. And the same elements of change from the Old Testament are also there in the New Testament. Peter and Andrew could have stayed fishermen forever, but Jesus came to their life, changed them by calling them to a whole new way of being. Paul could have been an overzealous, very pious Pharisee, but on that road to Damascus, when he encounters Jesus, he's changed and transformed into Paul, the church-planting apostle. And in the stories I mentioned before I read the John passage, the Gerasene demoniac, after he's cured and the demons are cast out of him, he wants to go with Jesus. But instead, Jesus sends him back home to a very place that had long abandoned him to the cemeteries and chains. But now he was returning as a changed man. And the Samaritan woman, ostracized, alienated, kept at a distance by those in her city. But if she meets Jesus... She finds her voice at last and goes back home to tell them of this Messiah made known to her. And it's not just biblical examples. Think about this church itself. So Woods Church, 110 years ago, was simply a small chapel on the top of a hill. Over some years, then, it grew into a larger church complex. And then 30 years ago, it developed into this building that we love and in which we worship. Over the years, though, there's been a lot of change. You've seen pastors and associate pastors come and go. And I'm simply another in a series of interim pastors who walk with you during some of those in-between chapters. And over the years, thanks to the rehabbers and Jeffrey and John, we actually have changed a few light bulbs in this building. So there actually has been a lot of change here at Woods. But what's comforting to know is the same thing that Jesus promised his disciples, he promises to us, that he would not leave us orphaned. Another one will be sent to us. Another one will be given to us, a counselor, an advocate. The Holy Spirit has been sent to be with us and with all of God's children here on earth. And not just as a, as a short-term house guest, but as a constant companion and guide and friend. But as I say that, remember Scripture describes how this spirit of truth comes to us, but it also changes us. We're not the same people we were two years ago or three years ago before COVID. We're not the same church. We're not the same community. We're not the same nation that we were 10 years ago or 30 years ago or 110 years ago. That's because the advocate, the spirit of truth, has been with us, guiding us, correcting us, changing us. Because that spirit of truth, according to Scripture, is sometimes at odds with the spirit of the world, the spirit outside the walls, the spirit that tells you, just go along to get along and you'll get ahead. No, Jesus said, the spirit of truth I will give you is one whom the world can't receive because the world neither knows him 
nor receives him. See, there's something about this Holy Spirit guest that moves us in new directions and changes every heart in which he and she finds a home. Um, I've mentioned before from, in these sermons that when I graduated from seminary, my first place, the first church I served was in Zimbabwe, Africa. I served a cluster of congregations located about 50 miles northwest of the capital city of Harare. Now, it's hard to preach if you don't know the people in the congregation. It's very hard to preach in a foreign land. And so there I was leading worship for both black and white Zimbabwean families. We shared a common Christian faith, but frankly, we lived in two totally different worlds. And for many of the Zimbabweans, particularly the children, in their eyes, I was first and foremost an American. And I must be a very wealthy American because I had a personal car and I had a church car, both available for my use in a village where very few people had cars at all. And for the white Zimbabweans, what set me apart is not only was I an American, but I had an American passport, which meant if there were any issues, any problems or concerns, I could ride, get on an airplane, and leave at a moment's notice. Now, I served the church there for three years, and over that time, I had the chance to learn more about the congregation, and together we developed a common faith language. But even now, if I'm tempted to say something here in America that I couldn't say to that church in Zimbabwe, if I was tempted to do anything that would belittle their identity as children of God, even though they live in another land, another country, the spirit of truth corrects me, challenges me. Now, those type of corrections happen all the time to all of us. As we've gotten older, there are people in our lives whom we love, whose respect we value. And it reminds us and it guides us to not do anything that would put that love at jeopardy, to not do anything that would somehow allow us to diminish in their sight. And so the spirit of truth works to keep us, changing us to do what's right. But that work of the spirit is not just interpersonal. It's not just for individuals. It goes deeper than that. Back in the 1940s, Howard Thurman was a very noted African-American preacher and teacher. And he wrote saying that he was dedicated to always proclaiming, quote, what the teachings of Jesus have to say to those who in human history stand with their backs against the wall, the poor, the disinherited, the dispossessed. He preached this a generation before the civil rights movement in America, speaking out against racial segregation, speaking out against a sinful American spirit that claimed that segregation and Jim Crow somehow was both moral and acceptable. The spirit of truth still convicts us and insists that anything we say on a given Sunday has to also be appropriate if the congregation were in Zimbabwe or Cuba, or Malawi. That it is something that could be preached to either a largely white congregation or an African-American congregation or a Latino congregation that's formed near the American border. But that gives us words of comfort, reminding us in Thurman's words that that gospel we're called to share is one for any, including those who stand with their backs against the wall, the forgotten, the poor, the disinherited. And then think about those other gospel stories I referenced. Think about the Gerasene demoniac. Once he was cured and went back home, the very community that had decided he wasn't welcome and needed to stay in the cemetery now had to welcome him with a place at their table. Think of the Samaritan woman who, for whatever reason, had to go alone to the well in the heat of the day, but now she was someone in that community that could share words that none of them knew but that would change all of their lives. And think about here in Severna Park. Think about someone who comes home here after spending time behind bars, after spending time in a war zone, after spending time in a rehab clinic. Think about a family where a person is finally comfortable as part of a church to acknowledge their gender identity 
and name who they love. Think about how that spirit of truth is different from the spirit of the world that would be quick to say, let's not rock the boat. Let's not be quite so accommodating. Let's make sure our rules are what are being followed when instead the spirit of truth comes and changes us and creates a home, creates a place that's radically hospitable where all are welcomed. We've been doing the stewardship campaign over the last few weeks, and the, the theme on the little cards is just the phrase, come home to woods. That theme was never meant to be a Hallmark card sentiment. It was always meant to be something different, to reflect that a commitment that we make is to that spirit of truth, that that spirit of truth will come and make a home with us, not just as a passing guest, but as a beloved companion. And as that spirit comes, we know that spirit will bring all and sundry additional guests with it, those whose stories we need to hear, those whose pain we will no longer silently condone, those who are different than us, but who find themselves right beside us in this home, at this font, at this table. The spirit of God's truth dwells with us, and with that, it makes a home with us. And so, friends, that's basically the good news that shapes any sort of commitment Sunday and the ongoing commitment to the church. Through our gifts, through our pledges, through our actions, through our mission, through our openness to that Holy Spirit guest, we are changed, we are improved, we are expanded, we are redeemed. And so I invite you to welcome that guest sincerely and know that, yeah, we have a lot of work to do together. Thanks be to God. Amen. So friends, you've had a chance to bring forward the pledge commitments and the hearts and the other reminders. We invite you at this time uh, to remember that you have a chance to also provide general offerings for the ongoing work of the church. There's a basket in the back. There's uh, opportunities to text to Woods 73256 or go to our website at woodschurch.org. But let's offer a word of prayer for these gifts and the offerings of this day. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, once more, we are grateful that you have sent one to us that we might become more than we ever could be alone. And may that spirit of truth lead us forward in the ways that are life-giving for all. Bless our gifts, our offerings, our pledges, our deeds of kindness, and enhance them by your spirit, that all we do may be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now our closing song.
Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand for the benediction. So it's actually helpful to imagine a house guest, what you would do to welcome that person. And trust that Jesus is the one that sends the guest. And so it's a guest to bring you life, hope, love, and peace. And what better guest do you need at this time? So be not afraid. Go forth as God's people to care for those around you. Go forth as Christ's servants to share the good news of what Christ has done. But mostly go forth as the host for the Spirit whose truth will keep you safe. And may the grace of God, the love of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and give you peace this day and forevermore. May all God's people say, Amen. Amen.